as far as the Big Ten tournament goes. championship as they host the Penn State Nittany Lions. The first meeting between these two teams was anything but ordinary. Indiana center Kirk Hastings scored a career-high 28 points, and the Hoosiers blocked a school record 14 shots. Indiana shot 57% from the field, while limiting the Nittany Lions to 39%. Yet, it was a two-possession game with just over a minute to go. Penn State hung tough, but Indiana prevailed by seven. Tonight, the Nittany Lions will try to pull off the upset in a building where they have never won. Manhandled Michigan last night. The Spartans moved to seven and one, so it's an important game for Indiana if they want to keep pace with the Spartans. And while Indiana still aims at a Big Ten championship, it's important for Penn State because they're already looking at the seedings for the Big Ten tournament in Chicago. Hi, everybody. Alongside former Hoosier star John Hoskowski, I'm Mike Leeson. It's great to have you on board tonight. And Laz, if Penn State has any hopes of coming in here and pulling off the upsets, their sharpshooter Joe Crispin will have to have one of those nights where he simply lights it up. And the juniors had a great year so far. First in the league in free throws, second in assists, and third in scoring. And here's what he did against Indiana last month. He got 24 points, made all his free throws, and nine assists to go with it. There he is, number three, the 6'1 junior. He likes to drive to the hoop. If the shot's not there, he can dish it off. Look at the tough shot he makes here, off balance, but he's got that shooter's touch. There's another drive inside. Indiana's going to have to control him better in tonight's game. For Indiana, it is Kirk Hayes, and he had that career high 28 you mentioned. The big key for him, 35 minutes. He's been getting in foul trouble in some of Indiana's Big Ten games. For, for him to play 35 minutes, he's going to score a lot of points. He's got a great touch inside for a guy six foot ten. There you see him use the shot fake and try for the three-point play. There's a nice drop step. He's also got the old-fashioned hook shot. We may see that come out tonight. Well, Joe Crispin takes care of business on the outside. Jared Stevens comes in with 12 double-doubles. And Jerry Dunn would love to see him record his 13th Starting lineups after this. Hi, right, John Laskowski. Tonight, uh, Indiana in Penn State. The Nittany Lions trying to make it four out of five as Jerry Dunn shoots for his 76th victory. And tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Sagamore Health Network, caring, compassionate, and cost effective. And we see the Penn State lineup. They're missing John Crispin, averaging about 10 points a game. So Titus Ivory's going to have to make up some of that scoring. He had a big game against Indiana the last time they played. For the Hoosiers, it's A.J. Guyton. A relatively calm game for him against Penn State. 15 points on the uh, January 8th game. But Guyton leading the Big Ten and scoring at 20. And the rest of the starting lineup for the Hoosiers. And for Indiana, they look to improve to 16-3. and 6-2 and two in the Big Ten Conference. The Hoosiers and the Nittany Lions coming up right up. Back in Bloomington Assembly Hall, and now let's take a look at tonight's fueling factors. Brought to you by Fast Max Convenience Stores. If it's got to be fast, it's got to be Max. For Penn State, they need to work on their field goal percentage shooting. Indiana leads the conference, giving up 36. Penn State's got to shoot near 50% to win the ball game. They've got to stop Kirk Haston. His confidence is up. But Penn State, not that big inside defensively. Haston had a big night last month. For Indiana, it's points allowed. They got 78 points to this Penn State team the last time they played. That's way too many points. It would give Penn State a good chance to win today and get Guyton going. He's the top scorer in the Big Ten. They need to look to him as well as Kirk Haston. Interesting, A.J. Guyton, number one of the Big Ten, as Laz points out. To Jarrett Stevens, number two. And, Laz, we should probably point out the fact that Joe Crispin at the top of the broadcast as we check out the numbers in the series, Penn State, has yet to win in this building. But John Crispin, the outstanding freshman, Joe's younger brother, out with that stress fracture, who's going to fill his shoes tonight? Well, probably Titus Iver. He's got to do some more scoring, and uh, uh, Klein Hurd also needs to step up. He got 11 points against Indiana the last game. He only averages five, so he had a good game against the Hoosiers before. A.J. Guyton, according to Sporting News, uh, he's running a 1-2 with uh, Kenyon Martin of uh, Cincinnati, as player of the year nationally. And boy, oh boy, these numbers are just mind-boggling. Of course, you're very familiar with them yourself, but uh, 
for someone walking into this building, you see 87 percent, almost 88 percent. That those are mind-boggling numbers. It is tough. Penn State's 0 and 7 here in the building. Their average loss by 21. There you see it. That's showing 27 right there. Indiana's won by 27 against Penn State. And they usually play Indiana tough in State College. You think a lot of times teams come into this building mentally already out of it? Well, it's a, it's a great home court advantage, I think, for Indiana. This is a veteran team, though. Kristen being a junior, Steve is a senior. They've been here before. They'll know what to do. Indiana Hoosiers have grabbed the opening tip. Bobby Knight using 11 different starting lineups. When you look at a 15 and 3 record, that might surprise some basketball fans. But uh, right now they're going with uh, Guyton. And Fife in the backcourt. Uh, this starting lineup, as they throw the basketball away, uh, is five and one. So they've been the most productive. So Penn State with a chance now to draw first blood here in Assembly Hall. Not a good start for Indiana. Errant pass goes out of bounds, and uh, Bob Knight does not like turnovers. Not happy with that first possession. So Crispin, they go with the usual starting lineup, and Jared Stevens gets an easy bucket. Uh, he draws the first blood. Twelve double doubles for Mr. Stevens. It's pretty impressive too. Uh, Second in the league in field goal percentage for 6-7. He's really a power four. They've got to play center for the Nittany line. A.J. Guyton high off the window. Equalizer. We're tied at 2-2. Stevens recently moving into 17th place on the all-time list at Penn State. To five shy of 16, so he'll get that tonight. But just 38 shy of moving into the top 15. Crispin trying to dip inside. Ivory had 19 against the Hoosiers in the first meeting. Crispin pulls the trigger from three, a little bit too strong. Guyton coming off the pick. Guyton seems to save his best game for the, the big game so far this season. This is lit up Michigan State, North Carolina, Kentucky. Newton with the basketball. And there's the whistle, five second call. And we're coming back the other way. Well, Newton's not the guy Indiana wants to control the ball out front. That's twice now he's turned the ball over. And there you see the look Bob Knight has, 29th season to Indiana. And a win today moves him into fifth all time career wins. Tying uh, Ed Diddle, the great coach from uh, East Western Kentucky. Good feet inside. Carl Jackson has his first bucket. Important for Penn State to get off to a fast start when they're on the road. And this is, they're up four to two, but their confidence is up. They can Indiana made two turnovers already. Maybe this is our day. And it's also important for guys like Carl Jackson to step up and get six or eight points. Jackson coming in, averaging about uh, 13 minutes and you know, about four points a game. Newton misfires from the wing, and here comes Crispin now. He wanted to put his running shoes on, but he slows it up a bit. 4-2, Penn State on top of Indiana, 17.50 to go in the first half. Whistle away from the ball. Andy Drury, Sid Rodeheffer, and Tom Rucker wearing the striped shirts here in Assembly Hall tonight. Tyler Smith, 6'8 sophomore, he's a, been a star the last few games for Penn State. Dane Fife at 6'4 had him, no way Fife could stay with him. Had to foul Smith to uh, prevent the layup. Tyler Smith knocks one down just inside the three point line. So Carl Jackson and Smith both with a couple of buckets. That's exactly what Jerry Dunn is looking for. And we talked about Penn State needing to shoot the ball well. They have early in the ball game to give them that four point lead. Getting back to Tyler Smith, uh, he did not take a shot a week ago against Minnesota. Played in 27 games last year. Down on the baseline. The turn, the fire, and a little bit shy, but the foul will send A.J. Guyton to the strike. We talked about A.J. Guyton. Indiana needed to get him going, and he is definitely in the offense so far early. His second shot already this time goes to the line. A.J. Guyton at the strike, 76% shooter. Well, his numbers across the board, 47% uh, from the floor. 42% from three-point territory and 76% as I put the jinx on him and he misses the first. <laughs> when you look at the stats, Mike, and uh, it really it's Jarrett Stevens and A.J. Geithner won two as far as the uh, midpoint MVPs if you look at it now. And it may determine, may be determined by how the team does in the Big Ten race as well. Mateen Cleaves, although improving quite a bit, coming back off his injury, is going to probably rank up there at the end as well. Tommy Uso Spartans looked very good in Price Arena last night, especially in that second half. Uh, Morris Peterson with 32 points. Crispin with nowhere to go on the baseline, so he looks for big number 31. And Jackson goes up, and he's fouled, and Carl Jackson will be going to the line. I like the Penn State offense here early. They 
They were using the drive to the hoop and then the dish off to the weak side. Let's watch it. Here's the pass into Stevens, and he goes weak side. Tough pass, but Jackson comes up with it. There's the foul by Newton. Remember, Indiana got 14 blocks in that first game, so they may be thinking, hey, we can block some of these shots. So far, it's caused fouls for Indiana. And Jackson misses the first to Jackson, a 59% shooter from the stripe. And getting back to John Crispin's absence, of you watching the game saying, hey, he's only a freshman. Joe Crispin, Jared Stevens run the show. Well, Crispin comes in. He'll take about five or six shots a game and hit four, and they're all threes. And we've already seen Jackson and Tyler Smith step up, and that's exactly what Dunn needs as Penn State holds on to the 6-3 lead. Well, Ivy went down on a, trying to set a screen uh, Ran into Lynn Washington. He's all right, though. Penn State doing a great job of taking away that lane in the paint. Stevens drifting down the lane with a jam. Boy, that's a big time move there. Stevens is 6 7, but he showed some good leap there to dunk that ball. 8 to 3, inside. Haston gets the shot off, but he's clobbered by Jackson, so Haston will go to the line. Indiana offensively wants to look to Haston. Guys can remember which teams they, they play well against. Haston knows he had the career high. A.J. Guyton's career high of 33 is also against Penn State. Now watch the last possession. Good delayed fast break. Stevens, that is going up strong. Haston hits the first, his first point. So getting back to Jared Stevens, we had a chance to talk with him about a week ago in State College, Laz, and he said when he takes the floor, he looks for a double-double. Well, and, and with 12 of them, that's not surprising. <laughs> He's a big, strong guy to deal with in there. He's got some good inside moves and a nice soft touch for a big fella. And Jossie Kleinert coming off the bench right now, and Carl Jackson will take a, a seat next to Jerry Dunn. So Jossie Kleinert, usually a starter for Jerry Dunn and the Nittany Lions uh, coming in. This guy averaged about 28 points, uh, 16 rebounds a game in high school coming out of Houston, Texas. Crispin gets that first step down to Smith. Ivory dips inside. Stevens with the leaner, doesn't go. Haston clears for Indiana. 8 5, Hoosiers can tie with a three. Guyton dips inside. Haston with the missed the bucket. Nice stick back by Kirk Haston. Looked like Guyton was going to take that shot. Haston kept his eye on him, though. Got the easy offensive rebound to score the basket. Haston with the steal, takes it the distance, missed the shot, and Guyton's there, and he'll take it behind the line. Light it up, that's a three for A.J. Guyton. Oh, and that's a gutsy play there. He loses hand on the ball, and it's still on the fast break mode. He takes a three-pointer and gives Indiana the lead. They have brought this crowd to life as well, Mike. Now it's going to be interesting to see how Penn State responds with this vocal crowd. Smith is two for two. Good passing. Stevens got the double team, saw Smith open, and Penn State really quieted this crowd with that basket. You mentioned he's two for two. That's uh, enormous as well because you mentioned he played in 27 games last year, but with Stevens Redshirt, he got a lot of experience. But a week ago, he did not shoot the basketball as Lynn Washington goes up. Newton's there to finish. Weak side rebound, about 80% of the time. That ball taken from one side of the court will rebound to the other. Newton was waiting for it. Brisbane thought about it from three, loses it. Stevens is there. It's rejected. Indiana with 14 blocks the first time they met in State College, and here come the Hoosiers. They're on the move. Haston finishes. Haston now with six points, and Indiana leads it 14-10. I'll tell you, Dane Fife really made the steal. He was falling out of bounds, flipped it over the basket, not knowing that there was an Indiana player there. Guyton took off with it. Crispin pulls the trigger. Too strong again. That's the second three-point attempt that's gone awry. Here comes Newton. Fife. And Lynn Washington never had a chance to finish because he is fouled, but he's going to the line shooting two. Well, Indiana's taking their patient defense and as they get the rebound of the turnover they're turning into a fast break they're beating Penn State down the floor and it's caused some problems look at how Washington is in front of Smith Smith has to commit the foul to prevent the layup so the 6'7 senior out of San Jose California had a 
chance for his first points. Rolls off the back of the rim. Jerry Dunn going to Banta and Watkins now. A couple of freshmen coming in. Titus Ivory will leave the game. We mentioned that Titus had 19 points the first time against Indiana. 15 in his last outing. He has yet to score here. Lynn Washington gets his first. So with 14 minutes to go in the first 20 minutes to go, Indiana Hoosiers holding on to the five. Indiana by five, and here come the ATA High Flyers. Here's the pass from Washington to Haston. He doesn't use the backboard, but it's 6'10". He got it pretty close to the rim just to lay it in. You know, as we talk about uh, Jared Stevens' 12 double-doubles, you look at Kirk Haston. Uh, he comes in with seven double-doubles. He's been a good leader for Indiana. Only his sophomore year, 6'10", 230. 15 and a half points a game. Indiana's done this to 10 times this year, at least a 10 0 run on a 12 2 run right now against the Nittany Lions. And Haston of his seven double doubles, four have come in the Big Ten. Panta inside. Stevens trying to keep it alive with a stick back, but here comes Indiana now with a chance to build on that 15 10 lead. Indiana's running a little more than they usually do in this ball game. I think it's to uh, get a shot before Penn State gets their defense set up. 85 78 win in state college as Crispin picks a pocket, knocks it out of bounds. You mentioned four Hoosiers scoring in double figures in that victory at state college. The three are averaging in double figures on the season. Penn State, likewise, on the other side. But again, Jerry Dunn desperately looking for someone to step up in the absence of John Crispin, the freshman. Took to New Jersey. Need someone to loosen things up and hit some outside Jays. Larry Richardson in the game for the first time. Say he's got some good moves, Mike. When you give him some room, he ducked under and got that layup. First time he touched the ball, he scores. 17-10 now, Indiana. Momentum as Smith steps outside. Now two for three. Stevens gets an easy one. Boy, that's just the block out. Coaches are talking about it. They had four guys blocked out. The ball hits the floor. Anybody can get that rebound easily, except for Stevens who walked in there and stole it. There's that hook shot by Haston. Suddenly he has eight, 19, 12, back to seven. Now he's still thinking about how big he had a game against Penn State, and he said, I, if I got 28 one time, I'll get it again. Crispin kicks it back out to Smith, freshman out of Illinois. Misfires again. Stevens keeping it alive, but Haston takes it away. Indiana looks to run again. Guyton, he'll take that three off the fast break. When you're senior, you can do that. Quickly down to Stevens. Stevens is fouled. And Michael Lewis picks up his first. You know, getting back to Jared Stevens, last, he had 24 points, 13 rebounds against Minnesota a week ago. Talking with Mike Boyd, the assistant coach, he said six of the 24 came on actual plays designed for him to touch the basketball in the low post. That means the rest of the 24 came on hustle plays. Which is exactly what he did there. He beat Indians, big men down the floor. Lewis had to foul him to prevent the shot. So that was a hustle play right there by Jared Stevens. Look at those stats. He's first in rebounds in the league. He's a good shooter, just a good, solid player. I think he should probably be a forward, and, and Jerry plays him at, at uh, center uh, for lack of another big guy inside. It's the first. He has seven. Haston has eight. Joe Crispin yet to score. Eight points now for Jared Stevens. Jossie Kleinhurt checks back in for the Nitty Lions, and Stevens will get a breather. He'll get about 35 points. Or 35 minutes, I should say, a game, so his breather will be short lived. See, when Indians run the ball up the floor, that Penn State big men have to keep running. You saw Stevens run down here, he's a little winded. Had to come out for a short break, he'll be right back in. So Michael Lewis running the points for the Indiana Hoosiers. Critical time for Penn State. Both Crispin and Stevens on the bench, they're two leading scorers. Now you got to figure out where they're going to score from. You got Lewis and Crispin, one and two, and assist in the Big Ten. Lewis coming in, averaging about 5.3. There's another steal for Penn State, but there's the foul. That's a good play by Ivory. Newton put that ball over his head, and Mike got easy place to steal it from. That's going to be two on Jeff Newton, the freshman out of Atlanta. 11.54 to go. It's 19-14, Indiana. Hoosiers on a 16-6 run. They lead it 19-14. Mike, three things you can do with the ball. Pass, shoot, or dribble. Watch Newton. He puts the ball over his head. You can't pass from there. You can't shoot from there. And you can't dribble from there. So what happens? Watch him. He gets the ball, puts it over his head. Boom, it's a steal. That's the only thing that happens when you put the ball over your head. I've been trying to tell my seventh grade team to do that. Now they've finally seen it on TV. A guy 6'10 put the ball over his head, and he lost it. So at their size, they're not going to get away with it either. <laughs> 
approaching from the press box, huh? 19 to 14. Stevens, eight points, two rebounds, but Haston, eight points, six rebounds already in the ball game. Ivory, three point territory, pulls the trigger a little bit too strong. Jerry Dunn's got Crispin back in the game. He, and now Stevens off the bench to go into. You can't keep his uh, two offensive players on the bench long. Lewis looking inside. Good ball fake. And it goes up and in. Larry Richardson's taken two shots, made both. They used the size over Klein Hurd at 6'7. Richardson comes in at about 6'9. Brandon Watkins takes the shot. Too strong. Kleinhurst there. Doesn't finish, but he's going to the line. Not sure, Laz, if that was a pass or a shot by the freshman out of Chicago. Got to count that shot, Mike. I mean, uh, that's a chance to go in. But there's an example of Klein Hurd going after the ball and creating some shots for himself. Offensive rebounds is the easiest way to do that because when you get it, you're close to the basket. Well, Klein Hurd averages about five. He had 11 against Indiana in the first meeting. Waiting for him to step up a little more. For Production wise offensively as he hits his first point of the night. It's a big game last year 12 points 13 rebounds against Ohio State as we check Jared Stevens coming back in the lineup for 23 against Purdue last year. Speaking of Jossie Kleinhurt. Well you look at uh, Jared Stevens 6'7 255. Are you sure he didn't play for Joe Paterno on the football team? My that guy looks like he'd be a heck of a lineman. You know, when he was off last year, the coaching staff actually were very happy he kept his weight down because he is a big guy, but he worked his, his butt off last year to keep the weight down and rehab that knee. He sure has had a good year this year because of it. You would, you stop and think about it. A.J. Guyton, of course, uh, probably has the inside track for player of the year, depending on how the conference wraps up. But uh, for what Jared Stevens has done for Penn State, I would hope Jared Stevens gets a couple votes anyway. Right. Inside Haston with the hook. Stevens with a rebound. At 6'7", he's a heck of a rebounder in there. Takes up a lot of space and jumps pretty well. Inside, Kleinhardt. And Jossie Kleinhardt finishes. That's the second quick shot. He has four. He only took two shots a week ago against Minnesota. Now that's the advantage of getting inside position. You get the, on the block and the defense sits behind you, even though there's a height disadvantage for Penn State there, they're able to score. Guyton deep in the corner. I don't know if Penn State will pull it off, but the message is clear, and uh, it's been received. As Dane Five pulls up, 17-footer, no good. Here comes Penn State. Ivory yet to find his shooting touch. There's the pick. Here comes Dane Five. Goes the distance, his first bucket. He makes a tough shot there. He's wedged between two Penn State players. Looked like he lost control of the ball a little bit, but got a nice roll off the backboard. Crispin pulls up. A little bit too strong again. All three of his three-point attempts have been too strong. Here comes Lewis. Nice feed inside. Good finish. Richardson with six. See, Indiana again pushed that ball and had two big men down the floor. Penn State couldn't keep up with him. And the easy basket. It's four points in a row for Indiana. 21-18. Penn State still in the game. Now it's a seven-point game. We approach that nine-minute mark. Indiana shooting over 50% in four of their last six games. 57% against Penn State. Titus Ivory nowhere to go down on the baseline. He's called with walking with the basketball. We're coming back the other way. Well, Indiana's worked very hard on their defense, and there you see it pay off. We're in Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, a building where the Hoosiers rarely lose. Alongside John Laskowski, I'm Mike Gleason. Great to have you on board. 25 to 18, Hoosiers leading Penn State. 8.55 to go in the first 20 minutes to play. I think early in the broadcast I said Penn State trying to make it four out of five. Actually, they're trying to make it five out of six. My apologies to the Nittany Lion fans. A good feed inside. Guyton scores. Oh, a great pass there. He, he didn't show him where the pass was going. Guyton had beat his man down the middle. Ends up for an easy layup. In five games against Penn State, Guyton with 97 points. He's got eight now. There's the whistle down. Walking with the basketball. We're coming back Indiana's way again. Well, Crispin's got the right idea. One of the ways to that the Penn State scored so well in that first game was the drive inside and then the dish back out. But Crispin moved his feet that time before he could get rid of the ball. Last well, Joe looks really a flushed in the face. Looks like frustration might be setting in early. He has yet to score. He comes in averaging about 18 points a game. And I think the pace of this game has really favored Indiana. It's been up and down. That's why Penn State's been subbing a little more than Indiana. Number 33, Larry Richardson with the hot hand now. And Indiana's going to try to wear you down. 
And it's happening early here. Now 11 point lead for the Hoosiers. Jerry Dunn's off the bench. He's going to call a timeout. Eight minutes and 11 seconds to go in the first half from Bloomington, Indiana. Hoosiers on top, 29 to 18 over the Nittany Lions. Indiana now on an 8-0 run, and Richardson four of those eight, Laz. He's played very well, only averaging five and a half points a game. But watch how aggressive he is on the offensive end. He's gotten the ball, very few dribbles, goes up strong with it, and big guys all love to do this. Larry Richardson's taken four shots, made four, so he comes in perfect now. High percentage shooter, anyway, 51% on the year. Crispin still looking for his first point. Take a look, 7 of 18, but 63% for Indiana. Rattles out, Stevens trying to keep it alive, but there's the Hoosiers once again. Notice how quickly they come back down. Penn State's having a tough night shooting. And Indiana's moving the ball down quickly to try to get the easy buckets. Michael Lewis, so what the rock. It's 55 assists to pass Quinn Buckner, number one all time. Quinn with 542. Seven on the shot clock now for Indiana. Oh, Michael Lewis. He can score as well. What did you say? He scored like 34 points a game in high school. He was the leading scorer in the state of Indiana his senior year in high school, but he comes to Indiana and becomes a assist man. So he can hurt you with that shot as well. Tyler Smith with a nice stick back. Titus Ivory may have been too open. He misfires, but Smith's there with his sixth point now. So Lewis is a pretty good guy to have at the point there. He can dish it off, but if you leave him open, he'll make that shot. Lewis with the four assists. I mentioned he needed 55, so cut that down to 51. Lewis from behind the arc. And Kleinhardt clears for Penn State. 11-point lead for Indiana. Five seventy-eight. the first meeting. Last year they went into double overtime. A.J. Guyton had that huge game, but uh, here in Bloomington it's been a different story. As John pointed out earlier, average loss about 21 points for Penn State. They're 0-7. Looking for Stevens. Richardson's there on the defensive end this time to step in. Stevens had to stay right on Guyton because he'll take that three-pointer. Guyton on the baseline. Good concept, poor execution goes out of bounds off the hands of Kirk Casey. 6.14 to go, 11 point lead for Indiana, 31-20. The Arvinator brought to you by Arvin Industries. All right, you gotta watch your man all the time. Look at Dane Five. here's the man, he's guarding Tyler Smith. Smith's gonna come way over here, and Five stays here, that's a mistake. Always know your man isn't gonna block him out. Five's coming over to help. Loses track of his man, the shot goes up, look where they are. Look how far apart they are. Fife's under the basket, Smith's way out by the three-point line, but Smith's able to come in because nobody blocked him out. Tyler Smith, the sophomore, with six points. Now he comes in averaging two, but Guyton, Richardson, Haston with eight each for Indiana. Penn State with six in the last six minutes. So someone will have to step up for the Nittany Lions. Whistle down low, some pushing and bumping going on. I believe the foul just went against B.J. Bosco. Another freshman for Jerry Dunn. B.J. Bosco, 6'9", 200-pounder out of Orange Park, Florida. The same city that Larry Richardson for Indiana hails from. Indiana takes its time now with the 11-point lead. I thought about it, former Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan. See, Guyton's on the bench for Indiana right now. He's a big part of their offense. It took him a while to find haste in the open shot. Stevens went up well, very aggressively, but he slammed it down. Lost uh, possession of the basketball. Here comes Lewis dipping inside. Good feed. And it doesn't go down for Richardson, but he is fouled by Jossie Kleinhurt. Richardson's making some strong moves to the basket, even though he gets fouled here and nearly goes in. Look at the passing lane, not much room there, but Lewis gets it right in there. And the foul. 
So Richardson, the senior out of Orange Park with nine points, he could become the first in double figures here tonight. That's another $50 for the Indiana University General Scholarship Fund from Union Planners Bank. This season, Union Planners will donate $50 for every free, free throw that the Hoosiers make. This season's total now over $15,300. And Larry adds to that. And he adds to his own resume. 10 points now for Richardson, the first to hit double figures. 13 point lead for Indiana. So Penn State came out, they did exactly what they wanted to do, but then Big Bone shifted towards Indiana. Some of the younger players that needed to step up, Laz, uh, they've taken the shot, but even when they release the basketball it's almost like they're not used to taking those shots because uh, Crispin and Stevens and John Crispin usually take them the fadeaway doesn't go for Joe Crispin but well, Richardson's getting it done on both ends Fife steps outside Crispin goes for it last touch by Crispin it stays on Indiana's end great shot that time by Dane Fife it's okay I think for Guyton to go ahead and take that shot but Boy, Fife only a sophomore putting that one up there. That's one that needs to go in. Watch it. He did have some uh, teammates under the basket. Kind of saved him there as Indiana retains possession. Odell comes in for Haston. Uh, Haston goes out with 8.6 rebounds for the Hoosiers. Here's the guy with the hot hand. Richardson scores again. He's got 12. See, his confidence is way up there. And when he made that first move and got it to go, now he thinks, hey, I think I can score every time. Until Penn State stops him, he may be right. In the meantime, Penn State's offense is getting pushed further and further out. Crispin loses possession, and we're coming back Hoosiers way again. Watkins coming in, Crispin going out. Brandon Watkins, the freshman out of St. Joseph's in Chicago. Boy, they see Crispin on the bench, not happy at all with the way the team is playing. Now down 15 points, he bangs his fist on the Penn State bench. Lewis inside. Once again, it's Larry Richardson, 14 points. He comes in averaging six. With each possession, the hole becomes dip, deeper and deeper for Penn State. Watkins dips inside, it's rejected. Kleinherd almost had it, but here comes Lewis. Yeah, he keeps his head up. He's looking for somebody to pass to all the time. Look at Richardson really working inside. On Turns. Klein Hurd. And the crowd's even anticipating each time he gets the ball, he's going to pop it up there. Inside Stevens, easy bucket off the window. Jared Stevens in double figures with 10. A little bit too easy now. Bobby Knight off the bench. Second time now. Stevens has beat Indiana's big men down the floor. And then Fife is the first guard back. He's got to pick Stevens up if the big men aren't back there. And uh, Stevens got the easy shot. This 30-second timeout is brought to you by Arvin Industries. 3.23 to go in the first 20 minutes. 15-point lead for Indiana. Interesting uh, stat here. Indiana 15-3. and three, Sixth best start under Bobby Knight. And when Indiana starts 16-3, and three, they've either won the Big Ten Championship or they've gone to the Final Four. So a victory here makes them 16-3. and three. That's going to be the end of a pretty good season, it looks like. If history uh, proves out right. And if you're a history buff, you got to love it. <laughs> So Bobby Knight is still upset with uh, Dane Fife defensively as Jared Stevens uh, sneaks down the other end. And Fife comes out, I think, partially for trying to take that three point shot. And then, and then the final blow was letting Stevens beat him down the floor. Saw the last graphic. Uh, if Bobby Knight should win, it'll be 7 to 59. The time with Ed Diddle. Odell with the basketball. 3.08 to go in the first half here from Bloomington, Indiana. Odell turns on the baseline and he's grabbed by the freshman out of Chicago. That's Brandon Watkins. That's going to be his first. So Brandon Watkins, very patient in high school. And we'll get to that story in just a minute. We're going to take a time out here from Bloomington. And Jerry Dunn and his Nicky Lyons are trailing us. Larry Richardson's on fire, 37-22. Thirty seven to twenty two the Indiana Hoosiers the most productive team in the nineties as far as winning percentage in the Big Ten uh, getting it done scoring as well. A big part of it. look at the stats first in the Big Ten in all those categories scoring three point field goal percentage by the way Penn State is first defensively against the three point shot hasn't really come into play in today's ball game. And rebounding Indiana number one at 40 rebounds a game. 
Kyle Hornsby getting some playing time. Larry Richardson, the number six of seven. His career high, 19 against Illinois. That overtime game in Champaign. Inside, this time it's Lynn Washington with his first field goal. He has three. 39 to 22. Crispin trying to get something going. It collapsed beautifully down on him. Ivory, deep, way too strong. Boy, last Penn State now just to shook up mentally. They're just uh, being taken out of their game. Well, their, their shots just aren't falling, but that's not unusual against this Indiana defense. They're only giving up 36% to all their opponents, and Penn State's having a tough time even getting there. You mentioned Titus Ivory with 19 the first time these two teams met. Now, Ivory is a guy in prep school, averaged 30 points a game, but he's starting to second guess himself on those three point attempts. Good steal by Lewis, though. He just tugged it away from Penn State to give Indiana the ball. Odell misfires. Kato Smith there to clear for Penn State. So, Crispin very quickly now up to Titus Ivory, dips inside the paint, doesn't go down again. That's a good drive to the hoop, but the shot just doesn't go. And Indiana comes right back the other way. Great steal by Crispin. Nice feed. This time it goes for Titus Ivory. See, that's the tough part about trying to guard Joe Crispin. you got to honor his shot, but he's such a good passer as well. And the double threat pays off that time. Yeah, people uh, in State College talk about his uh, averaging 18, 19 points a game and all the shots he takes. But he comes in averaging about four and a half assists a game. He's number two behind Lewis in the Big Ten. Assist wise. Crispin yet to score. Good feed. Smith missed a shot. Stevens. Good collapsing on Stevens, but a little fade away for Jared Stevens. He has 12. Oh, a little jump hook there. That's a tough shot. Had two Hoosiers around him, and Stevens make the shot. So a nice run here just before the half by Penn State. And they need a run. It's Minnesota last week. Crispin came on, scored six straight. Stevens went on a 13 point run himself. But Crispin yet to score here in the first half. We have a buck 15 to go. Odo loses control. Here comes Penn State now. A three will cut it to 10. There's the three. And again, Joe Crispin. He was 0 of 9 from three point territory against Minnesota last week, uh, coming off of back to back 31 point games. Well, he knew his team needed a big lift there, and that would have been it with that three pointer. He shot up very quickly. But don't for a second think that he won't. Catch fires. Hornsby rattles out on his first shot. Second opportunity, Odell. And here's going to be a third opportunity, Washington. Oh, Jossie Kleinherd had the basketball, had the rebound, the positioning, but he slammed it on the floor. And now Indiana's going to the line. Well, Indiana's really going after. We showed you the rebound stat. And offensively, they are going after the ball. Watch. Shot is off. Scramble for it. Richardson tips it. Now, Odell, it's a tough shot. Reverse left. Smith with good pressure. And right there, two guys down. Washington, the last man standing, comes up with the ball. Six seven senior misfires on his first. Has three Watkins coming back in. Likewise for Dane Five for Indiana. Odell comes out. Here comes Haston. Little defense in there for Indiana now. They want to keep Penn State at 26 going into the half. So Michael Lewis takes a seat next to Bobby Knight as well. Haston, eight points, six rebounds. Lynn Washington at the line for Indiana. Misses both. And Kleinhurt getting it done on the boards here tonight. He's been active. Hit five steals since last game. So Brandon Watkins, good opportunity for him to step up and get something done as far as uh, increasing his playing time at Penn State. Ivory with the spin, nowhere to go. Tyler Smith. Aston clears with his seventh rebound. Indiana looking for that last shot now. Seven seconds. There's a steal by Stevens. And it goes out of bounds, so Indiana will have possession with 2.8 seconds to go in the first half. And they bring Guyton back in to see if he can get that last shot for Indiana. So for Penn State, Joe Crispin yet to score. A.J. Guyton with eight points, but he's been uh, quiet uh, for the last nine or ten minutes or so. There's Guyton. And Fife walked with the basketball, turned it over, so it's a spot team. throw, and you can't move your feet just like you would be on the floor. And Indiana gives the ball right back to Penn State with 2.8 still to go. 
So the mental air gives Penn State one last opportunity. Cut this to 10, or at least 9. Klein heard walks with a basketball. We still have 1.5 seconds on the clock. Could be here a while, Mike. Uh, <laughs> if they keep uh, throwing it away. Now Indiana's full court, though, with a second and a half. So Fife inbounding with 1.5. Guyton, one dribble, high arc. Oh, and it doesn't still go. Still had a chance. But everybody here in Assembly Hall holding their breath. We play 20 minutes of basketball. Bobby Knight's Hoosiers up 39 to 26 on the Nittany Lions. Of Larry Richardson has the hot hand, so everybody kind of stepped aside, and they allowed him to do so. Well, he did. He had 11 points in the game last month against Penn State. 14's already a season high. He's still got another half to go. His confidence is up. All right, let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. Here's what Richardson was able to do. Didn't start the game. Came in. Here he sets the back screen. Screen again. He's wide open. And takes the layup shot. Here he is down and under. Fakes. Comes back under for the easy shot. And A.J. Guyton, eight points in the first half. That is confidence there. On a loose ball, takes a three-point shot. Penn State, no great story here. It's Jared Stevens inside. He's been their leader all year. He's done it so far here in the first half. There's two easy buckets he got. A 12 on the half, but not enough help from his teammates to keep Penn State in the ball game. Now let's take a look at our halftime stats brought to you by Citizens Insurance. What the, what's the state without Citizens? This is the stat right there, the field goal percentage. We talked about Penn State needing to shoot around 50%. They're at 33. The reason they're down, Indiana, about average for them, 52%. Bench points favored heavily to Indiana as well as the rebounds. You look at the three-point field goals, huh? 0 for 8 as we check the leading scores. Stevens for Penn State, as you'd expect, but that's where he needs the help. And Smith, the only guy in there, was 6. Richardson, a surprise for Indiana, but then the balance. Guyton and Haston chip in also. And what's absent from that graphic? Joe Crispin yet to score after 20 minutes. Almost ready to roll into the second half here from Assembly Hall in Bloomington. 39-26 Indiana over Penn State. As we check out uh, Mike Boyd, Jerry Dunn, and the rest of the Lions, you look at the shooting slump, huh? Boy, Stevens and Smith are doing the job. But look at Crispin. In his defense, says let's stop the top two scores. Stevens they haven't been able to take care of. But Crispin, 18 points a game. He's zipped in the first half. No points yet. And it'll be interesting to see if he uh, forces the issue, pushes the envelope in the second half. Look at Indiana. They like to use their bench a lot. They're shooting well, 7 to 12. Lewis has six out of eight assists. And the guard scoring 12 points. That's pretty good. And Richardson, uh, six of seven from the floor. A.J. Guyton comes in, the number one scorer in the Big Ten, over 20 points a game. Only took four shots, made three in the first half. Penn State basketball. It's some instant offense. Have some. Brown to make up. Tyler Smith, no shots last week. Took nine shots in the first half. Good bounce inside Carl Jackson off the window. And Carl Jackson got things going in the first half, gets things going in the second. That's a good shot fake there. Haston was going up with him, but the shot fake gave Jackson the advantage. He got the easy layup. Guyton. Beating his man off the dribble, but the rebound goes to Jackson, but not before it goes out of bounds. It stays with the Indiana Hoosiers. Right. Guyton's got that quick release on that jump shot. He didn't really have a lot of room there, but because he can release the ball quickly, able to get that shot away without it being blocked, it didn't go there. So Lewis inbounding for Indiana. And they look for A.J. Guyton as soon as he touches the basketball. Titus Ivory's all over him. He has had some good success on the inbounds plays. That time Guyton got right under the basket. Penn State tries to adjust. Indiana looking for Richardson. Turns in the lane. In and out, back in again. When you're hot, you're hot. Nice soft touch on that jump hook. Yet yeah, rattled around a little bit. But we all have nights like this, Mike. They all go in. <laughs> 16 now for Richardson. 
Yes, he's even getting aggressive on the on the defensive end. He's guarding uh, Stevens, their big man, and comes up with the foul there. Let's watch Larry. He feels him on the left. Goes right up that way. That's a tough shot and a nice touch. Pick your poison, huh? Jerry Dunn said we did a great job on A.J. Guyton the first time we met. He only had 15 points, and Hastings steps up and hits 28. Now Richardson steps to the forefront with 16. And the second half just underway. Ivory trying to break his man down. Crispin. You know he's going to be looking for some shots being uh, shut out in that first half. And a foul. Yeah, keep in mind, we mentioned he had back-to-back 31-point -back games talking about Joe Crispin against Illinois. He only had six at halftime and made up the rest of the 31 in the second half. There's the double team. Five tries to go in for the steal, but Penn State has it out of bounds. 41-28. Penn State can ill afford. Another miss down here. Ivory comes off the screen, light it up. That's a three for Titus Ivory. Gives him five. And they've got the lead uh, down to ten now. So Penn State's bench up a little bit. They want this team to try to close that lead. Oh, nice feed inside. Guyton to Richardson. Looked like he was going behind the back. Instead, went over his head. Now you've heard of trick shots. That was a trick pass. <laughs> Watch it now. Richardson sets the screen. And, no, don't do that. Let's do the old hook pass. And Richardson goes up and gets foul. That's a big play. No, well, Richardson, 18 is high last year, 19 a career high against Illinois. Last March in Champaign. Chance to equal that, which he does. Ivory having some problems as Lewis steps it up defensively. Titus Ivory's two for two. Back-to-back -back threes for Ivory now gives him eight points, and that's exactly what the doctor ordered for Penn State. If Ivory can make those shots on the outside, even though he mishandled that ball, he knew he'd made the last one. He wanted to try it again. He'll be ready the next time, too. Ivory getting some help from Carl Jackson on A.J. Guyton. Guyton. Oh, nice, nice concept, but uh, Ivory steps in. Picks up the steal. Ivory now can feel it. Dips inside. Basket counts for Jarrett Stevens, and he's going to the line with a chance for a three-point play. See, smart basketball by Titus Ivory. He's made two in a row. He knows Indiana's going to be watching him for that next shot. Watch. He wants to shoot, but he knows he's guarded, so he gets the double team, passes off. There's a, that's great team ball right there. He'll get another shot. He, he doesn't have to take everyone. So Jarrett Stevens leads all players in the Big Ten with 12 double doubles, six straight, hits the three point play. That gives him 15 points. He's averaging 19. Stevens once uh, had a string of seven straight double doubles, but that was snapped in the opener against Michigan State. Guy, tough shots, but look who's there. The finish up is number 33. Ball has fallen in his lap every time he turns around. And an easy layup. Thank goodness for Richardson tonight. He's been Indiana's big scorer. So Richardson with 21. Little backdoor action. And it still won't go down for Joe Crispin. Penn State is right in this ball game. They trail by nine. And that shot would have brought it back to seven. So Fife. Inside Haston. 15-footer. A little bit shy. There's Stevens with a rebound. Get 13 of those against Minnesota. Came into the game with 541 rebounds. Even 76 to move into the Penn State top 10. Inside. Oh, Kleinhurt missed the bunny. Oh, they can ill afford to miss those kind of shots. Boy, right open under the basket. A good pass from Stevens. Fight looking inside to Haston with that hook. And he hits it. It's a pretty shot. You don't see it very often anymore. But he's got a nice soft touch at 6'10". You're not going to block it. Stevens immediately comes down and answers. 17 now for Stevens. Plus, why don't we see that hook shot more? Uh, kids don't uh, really practice that shot at, at a young age. And Haston really picked it up when he got here to Indiana. And now it's a great shot. He also has a jump hook, the variation of that shot. You would think uh, if you're 6'9", 6'10", 6'11", that's almost unstoppable if you can master that shot. Sure is. Outside, ring it up again for number 33. 
Back to back to back threes for Titus Ivory. He has 11. See, all you can do is smile and clap your hands. This is what Titus Ivory did. He, he's going to take another one too and keep shooting <laughs> until he misses one. 48 to 42. Lead down to six. Haston on the baseline with the hook. Oh, Richardson there to mop up again. 23 now. And Jarrett Stevens very quickly. I think they call that deja vu all over again <laughs> because Indiana scores. Stevens beats Indiana down the floor for the We just saw that play, didn't we? Boy, 255 pounds moves so quickly. The senior out of Ferndale, Michigan. His brother played his collegiate basketball at Michigan State. Indiana's got to get back quicker on defense because you, you don't want to just match Penn State. They're only eight down. Keep Crispin still scoreless, and Penn State only down seven now. And we mentioned that Crispin with six against Illinois at halftime. Dane with uh, his third. He wound up with 31. It's going to be interesting to see what transpires with Joe Crispin as Jarrett Stevens hits his 19th point. 15-23 to go. Penn State crawling back into the ball game. Hoosiers by six. Second and he's brought Penn State right back into this ball game. He makes that first three. And then the international instinct. Look how far behind the line he is on this one. Boom, he makes that one. Now it's a back up and try it again. Forget those two pointers. Give me that three point line. Titus Ivory, 11 points now, at nine of his 11 in the se second half. On the other end, Delory Richardson now 10 of 11 and five rebounds. Got to give the first five minutes of this second half to Penn State. They made a great comeback. Only down six now. Now the numbers zero for eight in the first half, three for three in the second. Indiana's got the size advantage inside now with Richardson and Haston at 6'9 and 6'10. Offensive rebounds have been a big part of Indiana's game. I was going to say those second opportunities are killing Penn State down in the paint. Ivory. Oh, threw it away. Playing with a lot more aggression in the second half, but uh, had nowhere to go as Indiana did a good job of collapsing. See, Indiana switched their defense now. They put Michael Lewis on Ivory. Ivory's a lot bigger than Lewis, but Lewis can stay with him on the outside. So Ivory's thinking, I'll take him inside, post him up. But the turnover cost him a chance to get a basket. Haston uh, coming out from the low post, and the foul goes against Jossie Kleiner. That's going to be his second. It's a thinking man's game, that's for sure, Mike. I mean, the coaches are always thinking, but as a player, you got to think out there. I got a little guy up there to try him inside. The other team gets some momentum. I better do something here to turn it back. The game's a lot more mental than it is physical. That's a two for Dane Five. His first bucket in the second half, he has four. David Stevens way out on top. Penn State would rather have him inside. Crispin again off balance. Crispin was shooting the rock wall in pregame when he was talking to us down on the baseline, but uh, he's yet to score. Nice behind the back, and Stevens finishes with his 21st point. That's the reason you don't want 6'10 guys leading the fast break. They're not used to it. They lose the ball, and Penn State gets an easy basket. Michael Lewis down on the baseline. Richardson. The whistle by Rucker before the shot. Richardson's not Indiana's go-to guy at all. He has been tonight. Watch this pass. Didn't even look. Crispin flips it right over. Sure looks pretty. Watch it. Lewis didn't, or Fife didn't know which way to go. And Stevens finishes it. Inbound pass. Left-handed hook goes for Kirk Haston. That's what makes that hook shot dangerous. When you can do it from right and left, Boy, they can never tell which way you're coming now. Well, Haston, a 3 of 14 in that loss to Michigan State. Since then, 30 of 56. That's 57% shooting the rock well tonight. He has 14 points. 23 for Richardson. Back up to 10 at 56 to 46. Crispin gets his first bucket from the baseline. And he worked hard for that one. He was going to his left, fading away a little bit, and got that shot over five. Let's see if that doesn't get him started, too. Fife off the dribble, gets to the baseline. All alone, A.J. Guyton. 
Maybe too much alone, right? Yeah, good pressure by Ivory, though. He, he wasn't as open as he thought he was. Ivory made him uh, shoot a little quicker than he wanted to. Well, Joe Crispin uh, has not backed down. He just hit his first bucket. He takes it hard to the hole, and he's fouled. And Crispin, the number one free throw shooter in the Big Ten, goes to the stripe. Let's watch it now. Penn State down quickly. Nobody stops him, so Crispin takes it all the way in. And as I mentioned, excellent free throw shooter. Mike, this game's a lot like the first game at State College. Indiana played a good game there, but Penn State just didn't go away. And it looked like Indiana had the big lead at the half. They did 13 points. Now it's a seven point ball game, and Penn State just keeps hanging in the game. It came right down to the end in uh, State College last month. Let's see what Penn State does these final 13 minutes. Well, this guy doesn't miss too often from the stripe, hits both. It was 11 for 11 against Indiana from the stripe in the first game. 56 50. See, that's the nervous applause you hear sometimes at Assembly Hall. The crowd's saying, wait a minute, are we, Indiana's only up six here? What's going on? That's, that's what that applause means. Now, the Hoosiers, we all know, though, it's a game of runs. Speaking of basketball, the Hoosiers definitely had their runs. Guyton with the spin. And Guyton misfires uh, for the second straight time down. And here comes Crispin now with a chance to cut into the lead. Crispin. Great, great defensive play by Haston. It looked like Chris was going to get that layup, and he blocked it away, and then it ends up being a fast break the other way for Lewis. Tough call on Brandon Watkins. Uh, Lewis, uh, with the spin move, really had nowhere to go, but uh, Watkins commits the foul. Now watch Chris, but he's going in. He's going left-handed. He adjusts the shot, and Haston still able to block it because of the size difference. And he eventually got the ball loose. Jerry Dunn couldn't quite hear that referee call. Got a little smile on his face. <laughs> Michael Lewis with his first point in the second half. Lewis, an excellent free throw shooter as well. That was Jerry Dunn, the Penn State coach, fifth year. Does a good job there. And Lewis, one for two, 57 to 50. Crispin and company. Stevens. Outside his range, looks inside. Brandon Watkins with the spin offensive hook. As he tried to take the baseline, he hooked his man. Yeah, that's one play that the uh, officials are really looking for now, that, that chicken wing that goes out there to really seal off the defense. And there's the call right there. The, the official on the baseline has the best call for that. Let's see it. Here's what Tommy Rucker's looking at. And there it is right there. That left hand prevents the defense from staying with you. And that's a foul. Gives an unfair advantage to the offense. Watkins picks up his third. Another freshman in the ball game now. Marcus Banta, 6'10", a freshman out of Springfield, Ohio. Same town that produced the former Hoosier, Jason Collier. Richardson, one of the few mistakes number 33 has made here tonight. Throws it out of bounds. 11.57 to go in this ball game. Hoosiers now by 7, 57-50. A runaway, but Penn State is scratched and climbed their way back into the ball game in the second half. Well, plenty of time remaining. You look at the numbers, Laz, uh, Penn State. And the shooting percentage. See how low they were in the first half. 80% in the second half. But Indiana's still shooting the ball well. They averaged the last six games 55% field goal percentage in the second half. It's not Indiana. It's Penn State playing so well. Nice entry pass, but Stevens a little bit too strong. Missed the shot, but he'll have a second opportunity. At least his teammates will. Smith almost walked with the basketball up top. Guyton doing a good job getting out on Joe Crispin. Titus Ivory really working for a shot, and it's too shy. Lewis doing a good job defensively. Two good defensive stands there by Indiana to prevent Penn State from cutting into the lead. A couple of minutes ago, we talked about uh, some of those runs Indiana had this year. 14-0 against Michigan, 15-0 against uh, Notre Dame. They could use one right now. 57-50, Hoosiers on top. Penn State never won in this gym. A.J. Guyton. Guyton's been quiet, and he's Indiana's leader, and that shot may propel him here in this half. Crispin furiously comes down, takes it the distance, and he's fouled. He's going back to the line. I think Jerry Dunn has uh, realized if Indiana gets time to set their defense up, it's very tough to score against. So he's doing the same thing Indiana did in the first half. Let's get down the floor before they start their defense. There's really no pattern to it. But when you send Chris to the line, that's pretty good offense. Crispin hits his fifth point. All five coming in the second half. At one juncture this year, he had 30 straight free throws. 
Great form, watch this. Ball right at the hoop. It's another one. No thinking about it too, huh? The consistency at the free throw line just does the same thing over and over again. 59 to 52, back to seven. We're almost halfway through the second half here in Bloomington, Indiana. Dyke, baseline, jumper. Titus Ivory said, no, I got all ball. It was a late whistle, but Randy Drury's uh, calling the foul on Ivory, and A.J. Guyton will be going to the strike. See, the second time in a row. Same side of the floor. Guyton's going to go for the shot. Good defense made him pull up from the baseline. Now he gets to go to the line. He just drives in and foul. Bob Knight with Kirk Haston talking about Penn State driving into the lane. Well, look at the eye on Tyler one. Smith. He got bumped the last time down the floor. Stayed in the ball game. And he's being attended to right now. If that's blood, he's going to have to come out of the game. Let's watch the top of your screen now. Right there. Washington's got the ball. And Ooh. boom. They bumped heads. Back for the ball. Incidental contact. So there's no foul. So Smith comes over to the Penn State bench. And he'll be looked at by the medical people. And he comes out there. You see him holding that uh, left bandage over the left eye. That's a 6'8", 220-pound body leaving the floor and taking his place as a six-foot freshman. Boy, by the looks of it, it looks like Tyler Smith will have to take some stitches. Although we're sitting uh, a ways back behind the bench, but I would think uh, Jerry Dunn would like to get him stitched up and back on the floor immediately. As A.J. Guyton hits both, he has 12 now. He's the guy that can start this offense for Indiana. Look for them to go to him more now, the lead nine. Watkins almost lost it. That's a long way to be for a freshman away from the basket. Titus Ivory gets the open look. A little bit too strong, and here comes Michael Lewis, a good rebounding guard. Indiana now takes it down court. That glint in their eye as Haston gets the good look. Guyton's really moving around well without that ball. Washington not quite set on the pick. And he'll pick up the foul, turn over to Indiana. Personal foul, Indiana, number 44, Washington. Assembly Hall, Bloomington, Indiana. The home of the Indiana Hoosiers, John Laskowski. I'm Mike Leeson. Great to have you on board as Marcus Banta, the 6'10, 220-pound freshman out of Ohio, goes to the stripe. Or Ivory thinks he's on the line. Try to pull the old switcheroo and just see what happens. <laughs> Tom Rucker said no. I said number 42. So well, that happens sometimes. You get that shot up there, and hey. And uh, averaging just one point a game, so he's not used to this situation yet. And Banta has yet to shoot a free throw. Ivory, an 85% shooter, so you can see. And Banta misses. So a missed opportunity for Penn State. Here comes Guyton and company the other way. A.J. Geithner trying to break his man down. Big feet inside, Haston. He is clobbered by Banta, and Haston's going back to the line. Haston with 14 points. Geithner and Haston work very well together. You see him on the same side of the floor a lot. This time it's off the dribble. Haston sees his man leave, goes right to the opening, and the shot blocked, but the foul. 14 points, 10 rebounds, so Haston has the six double-double. That's another points. $50 for the Indiana University General Scholarship Fund from Union Planners Bank. This season, Union Planners will donate $50 for every free throw that the Hoosiers make. So Jared Stevens comes back in, and Banta goes out. 15 points now for uh, Haston. He had seven double-doubles last year, second only to Evan Eschmeyer of Northwestern. Haston knocks down both, 16 points. And rebounds. Back to 11 at 63-52, and time is of the essence. As Brandon Watkins, Lewis doing a good job of pushing him way back on the floor. Keep in mind, Watkins only a freshman out of Chicago. Crispin from way downtown. Boy, that is a tough one. You see Whoa. the player pull his leg forward. That means it's an off-balance shot, and you have to make up for that 
by shooting a little harder than you normally would. Very difficult to do, especially from 22 feet. I gotta tell you, Laz, I looked down at the scoring sheet because I did not expect him to shoot it from out there. Knighton breaking his man, weaving his way through traffic. He scores, and he's going to the line with a chance for the three-point play. Now, that's what a senior needs to do. This game's still in the balance, a 10-point ball game. Your senior has to take over. Guyton does it off the dribble now between the legs, even with the left hand, goes up strong, and a chance for three-point play. Kudos to the Penn State uh, medical staff, uh, the trainers, as they get Tyler Smith back on the floor as Guyton goes to the line with 14 points. Hey, he stitched up, but can't take, take, take the time to put some ice on it, a big lump on his eye, but hey, he's a college kid playing basketball. Worry about the bump tomorrow, huh? Battle scar to talk about in years down the road. Oh, I got this one at Indiana. <laughs> right. You should have seen me. <laughs> the Southpaw Watkins, a little bit short. Hasting with another rebound for Indiana. Right at nine minutes now. Guyton taking over off the dribble. Richardson, and it goes. I tell you, you got to love him. Just throw it up there. It's going <laughs> to go in. It's his day. 25 now for the senior out of Orange Park, Florida. Crispin almost loses control, dips inside, nowhere to go, and it's stolen away by Richardson. Guyton with the spin right into the breadbasket of Jossie Kleinhardt. Stevens, the recipient, he's going to the line. Yeah, Guyton trying to create something there. Instead of a pass, it was a handoff, fullback dive up the middle. And the Penn State took it the other way. The old belly play. How about Larry Richardson? Shot fake, drive him in there, off balance, falling down, going to your left, shooting from the right. And you don't hear the Larry chant very often here in Assembly Hall, but they appreciate what he's done tonight. Jared Stevens, 21 points, 10 rebounds, so he has his 13th double-double. Titus Ivory getting ready to check in. Larry Richardson, five points away of having a 30-point night playing for Coach Knight. Well, you got to know, Mike, all these guys, every guy on both of these teams was a big scorer in high school. He wouldn't have got a chance to play in the Big Ten. So they all revert back just once in a while, those high school days, some small gym with 1,000 people, and when everything goes in, there's just 16,000 here tonight, that's all. A year ago, I sat here with you. I think Rob Turner had a career against Wisconsin. He sure did. Lynn Washington trying to take that baseline. He's fouled. Smith only a sophomore, 6'8", 220. He'll develop into a player. Needs a little more offensive game. He's a rough, tough kid. Any bright spot. At least he didn't shy away from taking the shot as uh, they needed tonight. Uh, Smith with nine first half attempts anyway. There's another $50 for the Indiana University General Scholarship Fund from Union Planners Bank. This season, Union Plans will donate $50 for every free throw that the Hoosiers make. Rattles up, but number 33 almost finished. And Lynn Washington goes up and over the back. One of the easier shots Richardson's taken tonight, but that one couldn't go. And a good aggressive rebound by Washington, but the foul. Bobby Knight looking for win number 759. He was 35 years old when he picked up his 200th win. That's unbelievable. What was it, uh, his 300th win at the age of 40? Very young, and, uh, but a great coach. Uh, back in the early 70s, 70s when I played here at Indiana, he just knew, he understood the game, and when he said, this is what's going to win today, fellas, you went out and did it, and more times than not, it proved right. What would you have, one loss your senior year? Uh, in my three years of playing here at in Indiana, we had one loss at home. We had one loss my senior year, and the next year in 76, Indiana went all the way, 32-0. One loss was, was it Kentucky, right? That's year? correct. 69-57, 12-point lead for uh, Guyton and his Hoosiers. Guyton, little drifting move. It was in, and then it popped back out. Stevens, a little give and go. Back out to Watkins. He thought about it, and a little double pump as Lewis shot out to the corner defensively. 
A.J. Guyton, big game, 31 against North Carolina, 28 net loss to Michigan State. It's a lot like Morris Peterson. The big games, he plays better, right? He sure does. Look at that move. Spin, but he kicked it out, but no one was standing there. Goes out of bounds, and Bobby Knight's off the bench. We're going to take a timeout here from Assembly Hall. 7.23 to go before they put it in the books. 69-57, Indiana. Let's check out a previous play out on the Arvinator, brought to you by Arvin Industries. Boy, here's some big mistakes by A.J. Guyton. He tries to drive with his weak hand, that's the left hand. He stops in the lane, you gotta watch for three seconds, and then he leaves his feet with the ball. All those things are gonna lead to a turnover. He gets triple teamed, he gotta avoid the three seconds, now he's in the air with nobody to throw it to, and there he throws it away, out of bounds. Indiana's been uh, taking care of the basketball uh, fairly well in recent weeks. Rare turnover, 69-57 now. Stevens trying to pick up some uh, slack on the offensive end as Tyler Smith goes up. Hoosier said they had all ball. Hoosier fans said they had all ball, but the whistle goes against uh, Indiana. Let's check out uh, some other scores around the country right now. Brought to you by ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Well, Purdue picks up a victory. Northwestern uh, gave them something to think about for a, a while there, Laz, but uh, Purdue prevails. Here's a big game in Columbus. Ohio State by three. The Buckeyes beat Wisconsin and Madison by two earlier. Vanderbilt from Georgia. Bandy uh, having a good year, but they trailed in that game. As Tyler Smith hits another one from the stripe. Eight points now for Smith. He comes in averaging two. He'll gain some confidence with this ball game. And that scoring average is going to go up. And I can see why Jerry Dunn put him in the starting lineup. Good size, tough kid. And the scoring will come. And you mentioned his size, 6'8", 220. He's a sophomore. Boy, next year they'll need him to step up. Yep, they lose Stevens. Watching a couple of Penn State games in State College, I always thought maybe he'd have a nice uh, touch from the outside as Hastings shows his touch. Goes awry, and Jared Stevens pulls down yet another rebound for Penn State. Six forty to go. Working the low post. Good ball movement, but good defense by Indiana. Ivory tries to dip inside, and he draws the foul. But the Hoosiers are really making it difficult for Penn State to get an open look. But good patience by Penn State not to turn that ball over. It is very good defense by Indiana. So far, they held Penn State to fifty-nine points. They got seventy-eight in that first ball game. But Penn State just doesn't go away. It's a ten-point game still. Ivory with 12. That's his 10th second half point. One time nominee for the North Carolina Athletes of the Year, senior year in high school. Senior out of Charlotte. Misses the second. Under 10, though, 69 to 60. Hoosiers trying to go to 16 in three. Back to back to back road games for Indiana coming up. Northwestern, Minnesota, Michigan. Last time that's happened, what, 93 season, I think? Well, that makes this a big game. It's the last home game for, for a while. And you know how tough it is on the road in the Big Ten. Seven on the shot clock. Lewis pushed outside. Lewis. And there's the whistle with four on the clock. Uh, a little traveling music called against Michael Lewis. Luke Jimenez coming in for the first time. Tonight for Bobby Knight Hoosiers, the senior out of Redwood Falls, Minnesota. Richardson comes out. Indiana now four seniors on the floor to go with one sophomore. It's getting late in the game, and Indiana needs that leadership out there, but what an answer by Penn State. That's the fourth time that Titus Ivory has stepped to the launching pad and nailed it in the second half. 15 now for Ivory. More importantly, 69-63. Now a little zone uh, defense by Penn State. First time we've seen this. 
Indiana tries to adjust. Hastings, double team, good move, rejected by Kleinhurt. Tyler Smith baseline. Hastings clears. Kleinhurt was right there behind him, and Kleinhurt charged with a foul. Boy, big play there. It's Penn State fooled Indiana on the zone defense. Got the shot blocked. They came down, got a good shot by Smith on the baseline. That cuts the lead to four points. Shot just bounces off, and now Indiana a chance to go to the line. Let's watch it. Smith's going to be open on the baseline. He beat his man down the floor. That's a good shot, straight up, just a little short. And the foul. That's another $50 for the Indian University General Scholarship Fund from Union Planners Bank this season. Union Planners will donate $50 for every free throw that the Hoosiers make. Hastings hits both, 18 points now for the sophomore out of Tennessee. 71-63, back to eight, 5-10 to go in the ballgame. Mentioned those three straight road trips. The Hoosiers, 16 days between this game and another home bout with the Buckeyes of Ohio State. He goes out of bounds, and it's going back 94 feet the other way. Tough break for Crispin and the Nitty Lions. Now both teams are playing hard, and that's what you're going to see in a college game. Crispin trying to create something. Indiana's good defense there. Ball goes off Crispin at the end. Jimenez left all alone from three, and it rims out. It's a good shot. He was wide open, and he's a good three-point shooter. And we're coming back the other way as Penn State. Another missed opportunity. They walk with the basketball. I'll tell you, that's a competitor, though. Crispin is wanting to make something happen here for his team. And there you see the call. It could have been a charge as well. Jim was in a good position. And the travel call uh, against Crystal. Crispin on Guyton. Good match up there. Tyler Smith on Jimenez. Down to seven, Haston takes the shot. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Kirk Haston. He has 20. Good pass by Lewis. He's left-handed. A little easier for him to drive the left baseline. But even still, he left his feet and still got that pass to Haston. Crispin creating and uh, finding an open spot, but the whistle was blown by Randy Drury. A.J. Guyton is charged with the foul. And Crispin, the 90% shooter going for the stripe, down 10. Crispin now with 10 points and 7 assists, all 10 coming in the second half. Watkins coming back in. Tyler Smith will get a breather. So Joe Crispin, the senior out of Pittman, with 11 second half points. And with 3.57 to go, it's now 73-65 Hoosiers. 55 points. Shooting well from the field to go with nine rebounds. Out of the game right now, but great game by Larry. Let's watch what he did inside. Using his 6'9 body going up strong. Sets the pick, sets the pick, and he's wide open. Making the shot. And what every big guy loves to do, slam dunk. And you mentioned his numbers, 11 of 14, and he still has 357 to go to pick up another rebound so he can have a double-double. Indiana's got their, uh, their ball handlers, their guards in the game right now, just under four minutes left. They want to protect that ball. They really go with three guards, Guyton, Jimenez, and Lewis. It may create some problems defensively, but Jerry Dunn's had to go with a smaller lineup as well to match up with Indiana's ball handlers. Well, the Hoosiers, you, know, you mentioned the guards, 11 of 18 games have committed less than 15 turnovers, and there's the foul on Crispin as Lewis tried to take him on the baseline. Two of the same type of player right there, Lewis and Crispin. Good scores, good scores, hard-nosed kids. Games on the line, they're both going to play tough. There you see the free throws. Penn State really come to life in the second half. Shooting and making more free throws than Indiana. 
Michael Lewis hits that one. His fourth point, uh, both of his points in the second half coming from the charity stripe. The 6 1 senior out of Jasper, Indiana. Hits both. Coming into the year, he needed 151 assists to reach Quinn Buckner. In the last two years, he's averaged about 148 and a half, so it's going to be close. Kleinherd in the paint, and he is fouled. If anything, Jossie Kleinherd has played a lot more aggressively as far as taking the ball to the hole, as. I think that's what Jerry Dunn wants. He's a good offensive player, but his numbers really don't reflect that. But when he starts to make moves like that, turn to his right shoulder, that's tougher to do for a right-handed player. But still had a good shot away, and it goes to the line. Kleinhert, 48% shooter from the field, 33% from the stripe. He hits that one. He has five points. Now, last year, he shot 84% from the line. So he's gone from 84 down to 33%. But he hits both. Two big ones, two. Six points, 75, 67, back to eight. Mason, Lynn Washington. Lewis cutting across, missed the shot. Rebound comes out to Crispin. Crispin's trapped in the corner, and it's stolen away, or actually a gift to Michael Lewis. Boy, a great double team, Haston and Washington. Crispin thought it was a teammate. It was actually Michael Lewis who gave him the easy layup. So Penn State still looking for their first win ever in Assembly Hall as Crispin dips inside, goes off the window, rattles around and falls. Crispin now with 13, and he's going to the line with a chance for the three-point play. Now watch, Crispin's got it. He's fighting for his life right here. Now he's double team, thinks it's a teammate. It's actually Lewis and the easy basket. He does, he's not giving up though. He's going right down the other end, draws the contact. How about that shot? Banks it in, makes it a three point play. Automatic from the stripe, 14 points, all in the second half. Watkins comes out, here comes Tyler Smith again. Penn State is fighting and fighting. 2.47 left there, right in the game, just seven down. And it's not because Indiana's playing badly. Penn State just keeps staying in the game. Well, Jerry Dunn will be the first to tell you there's no such thing as a moral victory. But if Indiana should prevail in this game, there's still two and a half minutes to go. But uh, Penn State has to take something out of it. They have not played well in Bloomington in recent history. Haston, a little exclamation point on his 22nd point of the night. Boy, two big buckets in a row there by Indiana. The gift by Lewis. And then that jam by Haston. 2.13 to go. Indiana with 79 points now. Timeout on the floor. Called by Jerry Dunn. It's a 30-second timeout. The Hoosiers now with 79. They are 10-0 when scoring 77 or more. This 30-second timeout is brought to you by McAllister Machinery, your local Caterpillar dealer. Here you see Indiana's all-time leading scores. Calvertini on top. In fact, he holds the Big Ten record there as well. A.J. Guyton is now sixth. Moving up on Allen Henderson. Some great names in that list for Indiana. And here come the eight TA High Flyers. Indiana's last possession. Here it comes right from behind the basket. Pass is going to come back cut by Haston. There it is. Kirk Haston with a sixth double double, 22 points. And a while back, he had 10 rebounds. Set up to check with, with Terry on the rebounds. 14 rebounds now. Inbounds pass is tipped. Indiana has a big turnover there. Time now on the side of Indiana. Two minutes left in this game. The Hoosier State, the hotbed for basketball, as it uh, always has been. Over the last 28 years, uh, Indiana, top winning percentage in the Big Ten. Purdue is second. Indiana, just uh, a buck 42 away from uh, picking up their 16th win. Down to two on the clock. Guyton with the drifter. It's picked up by Indiana. So a brand new 35-second clock. Big offensive rebound there. It does get Indiana a new clock. It was 
Not a good shot taken by Guyton, so Penn State has to foul. Try to get Indiana to the line. So Jerry Dunn, who picked up uh, 21 wins in his rookie season at Penn State, really hit with some uh, injuries over the last couple of years, comes in at 12 and 6. They've won four out of five, but now they trail by 10, 80 to 70 after Michael Lewis hits the first from the line. You see Indiana's 10 and 0 when they score 77 plus points. They're at 81 right now. That could be 11 and 0. Crispin, less than 90 seconds to go. Dips inside, creates his shot, rattles out, rebound. Jimenez. Oh, that one should have went. Joe says. Crispin trying to stop that clock with a reaching foul. Penn State's had a good start, Mike. Four and three in the Big Ten. Even if they lose this ball game, they're still four and four. Their schedule is a little tougher in February than it was in January, but they played very well again here. Two games they played very well against Indiana, but uh, again, they may fall short on this one. Well, Michael Lewis had a chance to hit double figures. He'll have one more chance, though. They're in the bonus. And as he said at the top of the broadcast, well, Indiana still eyes a Big Ten championship. Penn State starting to look at that Big Ten tournament and the seeding as they look down uh, some of the tough schedule that Lyles speaks of. What a great event that's turned out to be. The Big Ten tournament in Chicago again this year. Titus Ivory backs up, steps to the launching pad. That's his fifth three in the second half. I mean, could, it, could Penn State be the Illinois of last year where Illinois came out of nowhere, made it all the way to the final game? Watching Illinois play in Chicago last last year, I thought Illinois would be fighting for a Big Ten championship this year. I really did. Speaking of the Big Ten, uh, some of the Big Ten finals at uh, Purdue in an earlier game, 75, just keeping Ohio State to 51 points in the Schottenstein Center. That's Wisconsin, the tough team to play against. They keep that game in the low score, and Ohio State's fortunate to pull that one out. So Jimenez uh, hits a couple of big free throws. Under a minute to go now, 84-73. Hoosiers coming in, averaging 80 points. And Ivory steps back to the launching pad one more time. Kleinhardt, three opportunities, and Kleinhardt finally gets his eighth point. Jerry Dunn steps up and calls the timeout. It's another 30-second used up. If you're watching ESPN Plus on Saturday at 3 o'clock when these Indiana Hoosiers travel to Evanston to take on the Northwestern Wildcats. And the Nittany Lions return to action on ESPN Plus this Sunday at 3 o'clock when they host the Fighting Illini of Illinois. Catch all the Big Ten action this weekend on ESPN+. Plus. There's the numbers with 47. Just under 48 seconds to go. Mike Leeson alongside the former Hoosier, war number 31, John Laskowski. It's been fun, Laz. Uh, thanks for having me on board. As you know, we enjoy you on Saturday from Charlotte studio, but it's great to be out, too, in Big Ten territory. It sure is. It's, uh, I appreciate you letting me come into Hoosier territory, and... Uh, it's great to get out and cover some of the basketball in the best conference in the country. Well, some people should say uh, arguably in, in the country. Nah, but don't say arguably. <laughs> <laughs> You're from the Midwest. That's huh? right. Best basketball in the country. So Jared Stevens with his 13th double double, but it's going to be an effort in futility. 84-75 with uh, 46.7 on the clock. Again, this Penn State team well over Indiana's average allowing their opponent to score. It's only 65. They had 78 in the first game, now 75 this time around. So we talked about Penn State's lack of offense, but they both games have scored very well against Indiana. And Crispin really a slow start. Finally got up to 14. But was shut out in the first half, so he's had a great second half. Oh, what a pass by Crispin. And now he saw Ivory there. So Titus Ivory, not a shabby second half either. He's got uh, 20 points, uh, 18 of the 20 coming in the second half. 32 seconds to go. So you have uh, Haston with 23, Richardson with 25 for Indiana. AJ Guyton. When I was talking about deja vu over again, I wasn't kidding. It was 85-78 at Penn State January 8th. It is now 85-77 <laughs> in Bloomington. 
and don't forget today's Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> only thing, Bill Murray's not here. That's the only thing missing. Well, if Bill Murray was here, you'd be really living this game over and over again. I'm sure Jerry Dunn wouldn't want to do that. As Guyton come in, coming in, the number one scorer in the Big Ten. He has 15. Eight at halftime, and Jerry Dunn goes back to the drawing board. And coming up next, they're at home against a Illinois. They lost in Champaign earlier, but uh, they had it down in the second half with about uh, three minutes to go. They played well in Champaign. They get another crack in Illinois. Crispin, very quickly. 15 seconds to go in the ball game. Titus Ivory launches one from the pad, and Haston with yet another rebound to stack on his uh, totals for the night. Good performance, good outing for Penn State, good victory for Indiana, and a lot of solid individual performances here in Assembly Hall. Stevens with 22. Haston with 23. Richardson with 25. There's Richardson with his career high. Sitting on the bench, as last pointed out, to the guards taking over in the latter part of this game. Larry got him to this big lead. There's Bob Knight. They wanted Larry. He's going to show him Larry. But he's not going to put him in the game. You got to have your guards in there. Look at Larry. He's happy. He <laughs> said, Coach, you're embarrassing me. Well, but I love it. <laughs> and Bob Knight will win the number 759, which uh, moves him up into a tie with Ed Diddle. 759 wins. Haston now with 25 as well. So two Hoosiers combining for 50 points. Haston comes out of the ball game. So Richardson and Haston are getting a nice round of applause. Uh, Jeffrey Newton, freshman out of Atlanta, comes back. And Banta. Well, Penn State getting uh, two, three opportunities down. And there's the horn ending this ball game. We played all 40 minutes, and it goes in the books as another Indiana Hoosier victory. 87 to 77 is your final score. Your final thoughts, Les. Great game by Indiana. They moved to uh, 16 and 3 on the year, but Penn State never gave up. I'll be watching SPN Plus on Saturday at 3 o'clock when the Indiana Hoosiers travel to Evanston to take up and 22 points for Jarrett Stevens. But the victory belongs to Indiana. They go to 15 or 16 and 3, 6 and 2 in the Big Ten. For John Laskowski, this is Mike Leeson saying so long from Bloomington. A month ago at State College, Indiana moves to 16 and 3 on the season, 6 and 2 in Big Ten play. That puts them one game behind Michigan State in the Big Ten standings. The Ellen Burger Report is brought to you by Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. And ladies and gentlemen, a man who never likes to be a sub, but he will be today. Steve Green is here replacing Ted Kitchell. He's with our very own Norm Ellenberger. Thanks a lot there, Lazzie. Well, Coach, another easy win in the Big Ten, huh? <laughs> yeah, nothing like it. You know what? People don't realize how tough Penn State is. You know, we had... You'd, it used to be you'd look when they first entered the league, you'd, you'd uh, look down the schedule in August, you'd say, well, there's, uh, well, there, there's two wins anyhow. But sure. it ain't that way anymore, baby. Uh, <laughs> not at all. That's, uh, that's as tough a team mentally. You know, they, they're not as good physically as some of the teams, but that's as tough a team mentally as there is in the league. And I think they proved that tonight. Yeah, we were talking about halftime, that 13-point uh, lead. But boy, what a tough 13-point lead. They were scratching and clawing. And they kept scratching and clawing and start the second half and made things pretty darn interesting. You know, a lot of ball clubs would, uh, you know, fold their tent along there early in the second half and, uh, you know, get ready for the bus ride home. But uh, and. Uh, I thought our kids played hard, uh, you know, most of the way. We didn't play as well as we could play, but stayed pretty well plugged in. And, and uh, you know, we got some good games out of some guys, and our bench helped us some. But, but uh, anyhow, they, they, they hung on. Well, you know, you talked about the catching the bus. I'm sure glad Larry Richardson caught the bus yeah. here today, don't you think? Well, if he would have set his alarm clock the same way Newton set his alarm clock, Newton's clock was set, we played at 8. Newton's clock was set for about 9.30. <laughs> and, and uh, uh, you know, in that first half, he had like uh, three turnovers and two fouls and a bunch of bunch of zeros. But then Larry Larry got up uh, got up at the right time, and that had to be his best production, uh, you know, forever. I suppose he's here doing his thing. He's, he's got good balance, and he's fighting inside. That's one thing Larry's always done. You know, no matter what, his, what the end result of his play is, He's going to fight and scratch. Sometimes it doesn't turn out the way you'd want it to, but tonight is one of the best. And here we got the fans uh, 
we want Larry and coach goes over and gives him his ado there. <laughs> My gosh, he deserved that one too. Haven't seen that here before though. Well, what else did you see out there tonight, Coach, that, uh, that pleased you, especially coming off of seven, eight days of practice? Well, I think that, that was just a big thing right there that uh, Coach Knight early in, the, early in the week started right off on that. Said, we've got eight days off, which we really needed because it got some rest, and, and uh, he got to get, get out that big old playbook that he's got and put in some new stuff for the second half of the season, and, and he, he, he always likes to do that, but he says, we got to be on fire to start the ball game, and we're a little, little this way to start it. But uh, got plugged in, and I thought really had great patience the first half. You know, they were doubling up on, on uh, doubling up on on AJ, and uh, he was having a hard time. He only had four shots the first half. And they were beating the heck out of Kurt inside, and he, he couldn't catch it inside. But we showed patience and patience, and when they when they uh, screwed their defense around that much, we found some open holes in there and laid it in a lot. So I think the, the patience was what got us the ball game. Absolutely. Well, always another game this Saturday, Northwestern. What to expect there? Well, they had Purdue down uh, six and seven points uh, early in the in the first half, and you got to go. You know, you got to show up. Uh, you know, let's face it. That's not. Uh, you know, it's a ball game that uh, you you have to go win. The league will be won on the road, and and uh, you you got to take care. You got to get these here, but you got to go out on the road and and get some wins, and that's that's the next one, and the next one, and, and the, the next, next one. Right? right? Say goodbye right. to good old Assembly Hall, and uh, we look forward to seeing you here in about 17 days. Well, good. We're glad to have you back. Where's that other fella? That other big guy? Warm weather. Who you knows? know how Kitsch is about cold weather. He's he's got to go south. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot there, You're Coach. Very, very good replacement. Oh, well, thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. And back to you, Laz. All right. We come back. We'll look at the final stats. Also check in on the press conference. There's Larry and A.J. right there. Stay with us. We'll be back. Who's a 6-2 in the conference? 16-3 on the year. John Laskowski and Steve Green back in Assembly Hall. You know, Quinn Buckner is going to be very happy with us. You know why? Tell me about it. Because Michael Lewis is gaining on his assist record, and if you'd have made some more shots and I'd have made some more shots, he wouldn't be able to catch Quinn Buckner. You know that? Yeah, but Quinn had so many assists because neither you nor I ever passed. He was the only one <laughs> on our team <laughs> passing us. Oh, so. that's not right. Yeah. We did pass when we had to. Maybe that was you. All right, let's review now our fueling factors. Brought to you by Fast Max. If it's got to be fast, it's got to be max. Now, this is prize. I know you haven't seen these fueling packages before, but it was points allowed. How did Indiana do? Wow. Look out. 77 points. I'm Gave sure up too that they, many. Want, they wanted to, to give up a, a lot fewer than that. Of course, get Guyton going. Early on, he got off to, you know, one of those six, eight-point starts, but then he uh, was silenced there, and he had to work for everything that he got tonight. All right. It was a big game by Larry Richardson that really bailed Indiana. Haston had a good game with double figures, but uh, they were able to stop Guyton, Penn State was, but you got to stop all five of the Hoosiers, and Penn State not able to do that. Let's now take a look at today's final stats, brought to you by Union Federal Bank, Indiana-owned and Indiana-operated. All right. Uh, the one good stat there, obviously, is the 87-77 score because uh, certainly early on in the game, the field goal percentage for Indiana was much different, uh, a higher percentage. Penn State off to a very slow start, but as it turned out, Penn State turned it on in the second half and made a, a heck of a game out of it. And, of course, turnovers were about equal, uh, equal there, but look at the bench scoring, and there's where Larry Richardson factor came in. A lot of free throws by Indiana, 26 of 36, and the big rebounding edge, 43-32 for the Hoosiers. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll have the answers to some of your Internet questions. And, and congratulations to Larry. even got a little... Uh, Pat on the back from Coach Knight in the form, raising his hand up there when the crowd kept calling for Larry. You don't put a 6'9 guy in there when you're, when you're trying to ice the game, though, at the end. Uh, so that's why Larry won't go make it back in yep. there. All right, let's go to the press conference now. Larry and A.J. Guyton are there. Let's hear what they had to say about tonight's game. Uh, it's been uh, mostly good basketball. Uh, it's been a lot of minutes where we play bad, bad basketball against Iowa and uh, shoot, Purdue. I mean, those games, uh, we won against Iowa and we lost against Purdue, but we should have won both of them big. And, uh, but overall, it's been great, a, good, a good portion of basketball. Because when I get in, I really don't look to score. I'm basically trying to get other people open because of AJ and Mike and how the defense plays. You know. You know, if I get a good look or a free shot, then that's good. But I basically don't come in trying to play offense. It was like AJ said, I mean, Penn State was doing a lot of switching, which was leaving me open inside for easy layups. <clears throat> you 
know, it makes you feel good. They appreciate everything that you're doing. And they see what you're doing, they see the hard work that I'm putting in out there, so it's a good thing. How about when Mike came over to you and put his hand up in the air with you? <laughs> that was nice, too. <laughs> that was real nice. Right. You know, Steve, we've had some time on that bench when the game's over and, and they've got some of the other reserves in there. It's a great feeling. Coach Knight comes down to the bench and brings back some memories to us when we were playing here. Huh? Oh, absolutely. But I think the only time he lifted my hand like that was my last game. Hey, he's out of here now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some no. the new recruits in. He was, he was sorry to see you go, that's for sure. All right, let's check now on the Big Ten standings to see where Indiana lands. Michigan State won yesterday over Michigan. They're on top at 7-1. and one. Ohio State won today only by three, though, at home against Wisconsin. They are 6-1 and one and a half a game behind Michigan State. Indiana pulls in at 6-2, and two, a game behind Michigan State, just a half behind uh, uh, Ohio State. Purdue won today. They are now up to 5-3 and three, right behind Indiana, and Penn State falls to 4-4. Four and four. We mentioned Penn State, a tougher schedule in February. See if they can hang tough there. Northwestern, Indiana's next opponent at 0-8, then Indiana on the road. They'll take on Minnesota at 3-5 and, and then on to Michigan at 3-4. and four. Very big stretch, important stretch here for Indiana as they begin to come down to the final part of the season. Indiana has not won a Big Ten championship in a while. In fact, the last two senior classes have not. But Steve, this team has the chance. They've got some veterans. They've got some big guys inside. How do you see it coming the rest of the way? Oh, I don't think there's any question that they have a, an excellent chance of that. Uh, a couple things as we look at the Big Ten standings, though, were that Michigan State, Ohio State, ahead of Indiana, both come to Assembly Hall. And that's going to be important, and it's important again. Senior leadership, yeah, they have a, a, an excellent opportunity to win this Big Ten championship. And with Indiana's next three games on the road, that means down the stretch, Indiana will have more home games than they will road games. Their last game, in fact, at Wisconsin. That'll be a tough one just before the Big Ten tournament starts in Chicago. Coach Knight has joined the press conference. Let's hear what Coach Knight had to say about tonight's game. I'll tell you what, that was as tough a game as I think that we've been in in a long time. I mean, we sat there and we're right down the line of the coaches and we're just sitting talking about it. Uh, extremely impressed by how hard Penn State plays. I mean, they, they get a kid, uh, the uh, younger Crispin Hurt, and, uh, and they've done a hell of a job uh, with this team. We, they played better in the second half than we did. And uh, they, were, they were tough. They, they were well set up to play this game. Um, they've... The two times we've played them, uh, they've broken us down defensively um, as well or better than anybody that we've played. I mean, we all of a sudden I look up and there they are at the basket, and uh, and they've done it. I mean, it, they've done it both times we've played. You see the respect uh, Bob Knight had for this Penn State team. On paper, they know they got Jarrett Stevens. They got one Crispin Hurt. The other one had an off night, no points in the first half, but they never gave up. And almost identical score to what Indiana saw at Penn State. And that's life in the Big Ten. It's always tough. Oh, I think this was a quality home win. Uh, there's no question that Penn State is not the same Penn State team of three and four years ago. They're going to come, whether well, four and four right now in the Big Ten, they're going to make some noise.